Boomkins. You guys are kind of getting like full character customization for your Boomkin, and it's kind of crazy. Yeah, this is kind of completely out of nowhere, and it owns. Yeah, this is like straight up real good. Uh, right, so uh, it, it's almost like character creation. I, I suppose the way this will work is you'll kind of go to the barber, and you can change. Uh, well, here are the categories. Decorations, whiskers, feather color, horn and beak, horns, Decoration color, effect style, effect color, eyebrows, feathers, beak. And there are then full transformations, which will likely be those, um, well, you know, like the the Calterin, the Zandalari forms, stuff like that. That is very crazy. Mm. That is very, very good. Yeah. These are pretty as hell, too. Um, I, Wowhead, I, basically. Yeah. So these aren't things that you straight unlock. Wowhead just put together, like, loads of different customization examples. Yeah. Um, so the point basically is you can just customize your boomkin like you customize your character. Yeah, and they have also, they have new animation sets as well, which match yeah. that of ogres, if anyone wants to hyper-theory craft. Yes, of course, that hyper-theory crafting going in the direction of ogres playable race next expansion. Let's go. Ooh, who cares? Actually. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think this is uh, this is real cool. Um, druids already are, are having a pretty good time. There are other forms you can get for like your you know your feral um, stuff like that in this patch. Um, it's it's funny with ten point two because it is suffering from being another major content patch, and that might sound very bizarre, but it is like the same. It seems like it is in the same mold as ten point one. Difference being. It doesn't have comedy mole people, uh, and it's the Emerald Dream. And, you know, we're seemingly getting features that are maybe better or more interesting. Yeah, I think outside of lacking some stuff that would be particularly um, exciting in terms of actual, like, content focus and stuff, this is looking to be a very, just a a good patch. A very, very good example of this is a patch that no one's going to care about, but everyone who plays is going to like which is kind of sad, but it's really well, like... Well, it shows, I think, something interesting in the new World of Warcraft development model. Um, and that is, assuming an expansion every two years... Uh, depends, because you'd, you'd either want an expansion every two years... Um, oh, or would they do that with a yearly expansion? Sorry, I'm just trying to think of like what um, you know, like what makes sense, like development, uh, just sort of pipeline wise. How many major content patches you're going to get? But I think what's basically happened is um, they've been really good at like getting people back in for expansions and big spikes. These patches don't need to set the world on fire; they just need to keep way more players. And from what Blizzard have said, these modern content patches have been doing that. I think just by virtue of like there are more of them, even though I think. Some things have felt a bit slapdash or confusing in their rollout. Uh, you know, they have had better retention. Like if you're if you play druids, like this is a good patch to come back for too. And druids are the most played class in World of Warcraft, I believe. Uh, assuming the data that I One see script is that is correct. The uh, blood elves are the most played race. Night elves are the second most played race, and druids are the most played class. Which is sure fascinating, but that's because druids are. I mean, I don't know how much of that is bots because of herbalism. <laughs> and that's like genuinely like an actual consideration. But yeah, it's druids, hunters, paladins. That's the that's the, that's the true. That's the true. Now, obviously, of course, druids don't get legendary this patch. No. That would have been very cool. I obviously understand. They're like, yeah, well, Farak. What about the Farax? He has an axe that's cool and stuff. And that's fine. That's great. But at the same time, should have just give druid... Um, just, just, just here you go, Druids. Here's the true and complete and full love letter to you. Because I think that would have been one of the coolest things they could possibly have done. Furries play Druid. I'm sure they do. I'm sure a lot of people who play Druids are furries. <laughs> Same with what? Are, what are all the what are all the classes that Vilpera can be? Yeah, yeah. and Worgen as well. Mm. It is a very good. What about the Axis scenarios? Yeah, what about the Axis scenarios? That's a good question. I should probably make a Vulpara. No, we shouldn't. Don't actually not go ahead. Work away. There we go. Work away. Do it. Do do what do what your heart tells you to. Freedom. Don't you worry. Um, so uh, yeah, th- there we have it. Uh, this druid stuff's really good. It's the yep. sort of thing that they kind of didn't need to go that far, but it's pretty cool that they did. Maybe it shows uh, an increased capacity 
I suppose, and like how much shit they could do. 